So welcome back to the final installment of this incredibly long game. Uh, when we last saw our heroes, uh, they had finished a big battle and they had just found the room with the final shrine. So now it is time to do uh, the last round and see how it all turns out. Okay, so all of this can move over. We're going to move this out of the way. We're going to pull this, I think we're going to go this way this time. All the sanity here. We have an encounter. Doors don't matter. One, two, three, it's a black fang. Another black fang encounter. At least we're staying very thematic. Scratched in bone. Bones lie the walls, line the walls here, ceremonially positioned to form patterns and runes along with stones, feathers, and trinkets. As you look closer at the bones, you can see that they are etched all over with some sort of writing and symbols. Without thinking, you find yourself reaching out to touch a skull. The scratched-in markings glowing bright in response with otherworldly energy. A random hero takes a spirit four test. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. So the bandito takes a spirit four test, and then we will see what happens. His spirit is three. Oh, he makes it. For every four rolled, you may choose one hero to be protected from the energy discharge. Each hero not protected must discard a grit as it is absorbed by the bones of the damned. If at least one six was rolled during the test, all protected heroes may also recover a grit. Hmm, you know, could I, uh, should I burn a grit to try and re-roll that? Um, I think, no, I don't think I'm going to bother. Um, so he is going to protect the lawman. He's going to protect the lawman, so the lawman will not lose a grit. So that takes the saloon girl down to two grit, the marshal down to no grit, and the bandito down to two grit. Then we place, that's been done, we place this here, and now we have to roll to see if it's protected. Oh my goodness, please don't let it be protected. And it is protected. So then, what we have to do is, of course, on a 1, 2, 3, it's Black Fang Tribe. On a 4, 5, or 6, it is uh, just a threat card. I'm going to double check that. One, two, or three is guarded by enemies. Draw a threat card. Okay, so as per the adventure card. So, on a one, two, or three, it's Black Fang. It is Black Fang again. Okay, there are five of them this time. There are four, six Dark Stone. Three, four, five, six Dark Stone. Oh, that was five of them, right? Yes. Um, pretty sure it was five. Ugh. If it's not, that's my fault. All right. Do they have a tribal affiliation? No, thank goodness. That makes life a little better. And... Okay, what are their two elite abilities? Oh, they got that. Plus four health, plus two combat again. Oh, and the hits on fours and plus one defense, so their defense is three. Okay, I don't even know why I bothered putting that two and that five away. Okay, this could be a... Well, at least I don't think the... And now... The Dark World Spirit bonus they get is a 5. Savage Wolf plus 1 combat. So they are actually 6 combat. 
Okay, so that was that. Eesh. We've got a whole nother round of this crazy. So, all right, another sanity over there. Another hold back the darkness. Uh-oh. I don't remember what two of ones is, but I think it's an attack. So an ambush attack. So on a one, two, or three, it's more Black Fang Tribe. Nope, it is a regular threat. I was hoping for Black Fang. Okay, they do mediums because there are four of them. Pretty sure. Yeah. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Black Fang Tribe. Okay. P Black Fang Tribe. Unfortunately, I think I only have. I don't have enough. So I have to give them another elite ability. Put in as many as I have. So back to six. And this is an ambush. That gives them another elite ability. Five. And this can be upgraded multiple times. So they are now 14 health and plus four combat. So plus five combat. So they're at eight combat each. So that's going to be 16 attacks on these people. Oh, okay. Well, they get to go first anyway, so it, it's going to be the same. It's just going to be a grind. Holy smokes, this is a grind. Well, then how would we... All right. So that's going to be 16 attacks on each... So as you can see, I had to reset the final battle, and it's because I made two mistakes in it. I First off, for some reason I had it in my head, that internal mutation tribal trait they had last time with the 5 plus armor, I somehow transposed that over to the new fight, um, even though they don't have a trait this time. And I forgot to give them their plus 4 health for rolling that second elite. I gave them the plus two combat, get, taking them up to eight each, but I forgot the health. So between those two things, I have no idea if the heroes would have still won or not. Two of them died. Um, I think the plus five uh, saving throw, the armor probably helped more than missing the four wounds. But since you can only do two wounds per turn on these guys, I, I have no idea. So I had to reset. I took back everything they won. Um, I, you know, uh, Reset the posse marker, reset the, well the posse marker doesn't reset because it's on 10 and you need 8s now. Um, reset the sanity and then went back and looked um, and uh, reset their grit and everything to where they were at the beginning of that. So I got to start over and that's just the way it is. So last, when we left, rolled the double ones. Uh, that gave them the extra elite ability. One was in ambush. The others are now moving. So we need to go ahead and do the fighting. Uh, and that is 16 attacks on each of them because they have the wild attack trait, uh, which give, means they can attack all adjacent enemies. Um, I just lined them up like that because it really doesn't matter. They go first. There's no way we'll ever be able to move and change that up to get more attacks, um, which I'd like because the bandito kind of stinks at, at shooting uh, these guys um, because of their armor um, so and then the other thing to remember is their plus one defense on this turn which actually takes them up to plus four defense because of their void heightened senses which gives them plus one defense and melee to hit and I forgot that they get to roll to see if they get a grit each turn so the lawman does not get a grit bandito gets a grit um, which takes him to his max grit. Uh, Saloon Girl gets a grit. That takes her to her max grit. And the uh, Marshal, he gets a grit. Which is good, because he didn't have any. So, with that done, now it is 16 attacks on the Saloon Girl. 
and two sixes, which takes two of their dark stone, which leaves them with four. I'm going to put that back over there. And I don't like that they hit on fours. That is giving them... That actually gave them three extra hits this turn. Now, how many extra? Ooh, plus 11. Okay, so we're going to roll these defense, and then we'll roll the 11. Um, she takes two. And I would roll these all at once, but I don't have quite enough dice for that. In case she wants to use a grit. Um, she's going to use a grit to re-roll these. Alright, so she only takes two damage. I just stuck all the wounds over here because I end up going through all of them. And now 16 attacks on the marshal. Make sure that's all. Yeah, okay. Alright, well that was not... Oh, two sixes, so two more dark stone. How many extra? Four more, so we'll just roll them all together now. Oh, oh, ugh. All right, so that's eight wounds he would take. We're, we're just gonna roll his armor. Um, so he's still, he only takes four wounds. So that's their turn one. So now the saloon girl is gonna throw her dynamite. So she has dynamite, the marshal has dynamite, and the lawman has dynamite. Only the bandito who's holding, model is holding dynamite doesn't have it. So anyway, she's going to put her dynamite right there. And she hits. So, number of hits on this guy is three. Um, so no defense, but the max he can take is two. We're all throwing, everybody's throwing their dynamite this turn, by the way. So this guy, three, no defense, so he's going to take two. This one, five, no defense, and their plus one defense is, this is a, it's a good time to use the dynamite. This guy here, five, that means he's going to take two. And when I played it the last time and I was giving them their armor, they were defending these things, all these things, with their armor. Five, two for this guy, and then this one here. Four, two for this guy. So, and I forgot to roll for her to move. She gets no grit. All right. Lawman, he's going to put dynamite same place, but first roll to move. Nope. Now throwing his dynamite, he hits. So this guy, six. That'll be two. This guy, five. That'll be two. This guy, just one. This guy here, two. This one here, two more for him. Uh-oh. Okay, we're just gonna have to, have to remember. And then for this guy, that's two more for him. So, everybody over here has four. Lawman's going to throw his right here. And he misses. Now roll to, roll to move before I use my grit. Oh, he does get a grit. That's good. But he's just going to use it to re-roll that hit. A three. I think he still misses. Yes. Alright, so how many times does it bounce? Three times. Oh, no. A four. So that it goes to here and then a one brings it to here and now 
a two. Oh no! That brings it to here. So, okay, this guy here, we all... Oh no, this sucks. This was bad juju. Uh, so him... Takes two more wounds. So now, on this guy here, oh, just one wound. All right, and now we get all the heroes. So the saloon girl takes two wounds. The marshal takes one, roll his defense. Nope, he still takes the wound. Takes him up to five. Bandito, he takes two wounds. Takes him up to five. And the lawman. Oh no, he takes five wounds. And Marshall gets a concussion. Wow, okay, that did not go as planned. Alright, so, Bandito's turn. He'll roll to move. No grit. He will do his, his attacks. He gets to reroll one. Nope. So a critical and a regular. So let me see. He's going to put the critical on this guy here for four damage. So that takes him up to ten. And then he will put his regular one on him as well. That's three, but he's got a defense of four, so no help this turn. And that is the end of the first turn. We did a lot of damage, but did not, well, we did a lot of damage to ourselves as well. So now, to the next turn, let's hold back the darkness. We do. And it's an 11, and he doesn't have a monster come out of his chest anymore. So, we held back the darkness. No other pre, oh, I forgot, comforting presence. So, down to four wounds on the marshal. Down to four wounds on... Well, actually, everybody has four wounds now. Um, yeah, actually, everybody does. And then she gets 30 experience. Now, 18 attacks on the saloon girl. We've got to kill some of these guys. Okay, so two sixes. That is the last two dark stone. So no more of that nonsense. Oh, but that's a lot of hits. All right, plus 11 more. So she's going to roll them all together, but i got to do them in two separate handfuls. So defense here. Ooh, she does not defend... That's six. She didn't defend six. And then with the eleven... So, give her six. Plus... Another seven, eight, nine, ten. She is going to use her cigar to block all damage. Uh, she can do that once per adventure. So she's blocking all that damage. All right, now the marshal. Um, and I guess technically she can only do it for one of them, but um, for the speed of the game, I'm having to do them all together, and that's just how it is. Uh, so she may have taken a few. Um, Marshall can defend this many. No more dark stones, so no more rolling extra damage. Ooh. So he's taking eight. But he gets to roll his five. His fives. Give me some fives. Alright. 
So he actually takes four. That's not bad. It's better than average. So he takes four more damage. And that is the end of their turn. Um, now they're back to three defense. So we'll let the saloon girl go. Yes, saloon, saloon girl's going to go first. Um, she's going to do a reroll. Misses. She's going to use her holdout pistol and hits with the holdout pistol. And it gets critical on five or six. So she's going to do a critical on this guy here. Three wounds. He can only take two. So he is up to 12. All right, we're going to let the marshal goes next. Uh, he can reroll one. He's got one hit, two hits. Uh, so he's going to put it on first hit on this guy here. Five damage, so three defense. That's two. That's enough to kill him. That's good. Finally, that's two. He gets to heal a wound because he killed something. He gets. Uh, experience for killing him. So it's 40 plus 3 is 55, so he actually gets 65 experience. And then with his other regular attack, he will put it on... He doesn't have to do adjacent enemies. Uh, so he's going to put it on this guy here. And he misses. Oh well. It was worth a shot. Next Oh, and I didn't roll for him to move. Oh, and he gets a grit. Next is the lawman. Roll to move. He gets a grit. Um, he is going to take his two shots at... Well, he's just going to take his two shots with his gun. He gets to reroll one. So he's got two hits. And he's going to put them both on this tribesman there. Each do five. He gets the three additional damage. One because of his gun, two because they're a higher initiative. But that just works out to being four wounds because you can only take two per. So that is four more. So give them one. Two, three, four. All right, next is the Bandito. He will dual wield his pistols. Um, he gets one crit, gets to reroll, still misses. He's going to put his one crit on that guy as well, doing three damage. So that takes him up to 10. Oh, and roll to move. No grit. That is the end of this turn. Comforting presence. So that will be 30 more experience for the saloon girl. Hold back the darkness. Nine, they do. Well, we'll just keep... It's still going to be another 16 attacks on everybody. The saloon girl and the... Okay. Well, I guess I actually could. I didn't think about it, but I can keep it separate since it's eight per color. So we got that many. So I'll remember that in the future. She's going to defend. Ooh, gross. Okay, she defends these. Um, that is eight damage. Um, she's going to burn a grit to reroll those. All right, four damage. We, she can take four damage. It'll be okay. Throw one of these out there. All right, next, it's on the lawman. Gotta quit 
dropping night dice everywhere. I'm so glad they're out of dark stone. Now he can defend against these. Another three. Wow. This is not. Yeah. That is six. Now he'll do his five armor. Well, he takes five. That takes him up to 11 wounds. He's going to probably need to heal here shortly because he might not make another round if he doesn't. All right, so now it is Saloon Girl's turn. Roll to move. Nothing. Roll to hit. One crit. And she gets to reroll one. Still misses. She's going to put her crit on this guy as well. And that's two more wounds, taking him up to 12. Uh, you know what? We're going to let the marshal go. What do, what do the other guys have when they kill something? This is really... I need to sneak through. Yeah, no. Alright, so the U.S. Marshal goes. He's got one crit. He gets to reroll one. So a hit and a crit. Um... So he's going, because of his Punisher, he's going to go ahead and use this non-crit on this guy. And he does 8 damage, so that is takes him to 14, so he kills something. He can heal a wound. And he gets to get another attack, and he gets another 65 experience. He's going to put his next attack on this thing. I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, yeah, he'll just put it on this one right here. That's five damage, minus three combat. Oh, well, this was a crit. Well, it doesn't matter. It's two. It's the most he can do. But he gets another attack, and he does another crit. And he's going to put it on the same guy, and so another two. So. so seven wounds here. All right, now the lawman is going to go with his two shots. Ooh. Can reroll one. Ooh. I guess that's his turn. <laughs> that was not too helpful. Okay, Bandito is going to go, and he can reroll one. Nope, so two hits, he's going to put them both on this guy here. A six and a two, the two does nothing, the six does two wounds. Taking him up to ten. And that's the end of another turn. So... Time to hold back the darkness. And a nine, they do again. We're going to have move forward. He'll come here. And we're back to 16. Oh, and I did not. Oh, man. Oh, I screwed up. I did not heal. Oh, but I do have comforting presence. I forgot to heal the... Got to heal the U.S. Marshal. So let's we'll see if he can survive a turn. All right, attacks on the saloon girl. Okay, not as bad. All right. Defends. Ooh, she just takes two total wounds. Boy, we can live with that. Now the Marshal. 16 attacks on the mark marshal. And I may have killed him by forgetting to heal him. Ooh, ye ooh, yes. This is bad, bad, bad. Oh. Wow. Okay. Wow, he saves them all. Okay. I won't forget to heal him this time, I hope. 
All right, so Saloon Girl rolls to move. She gets back that grit she used last turn. She attacks. Gets to re-roll one. All right, she has one critical. She's going to put it on this guy here. And does two more wounds. So guess what happens now? The lawman is going to use his herbs to heal 2d6 wounds. Ah, it was a six. He only ends up healing four. Ah, bounced off itself. All right, so he is going to attack. Gets to reroll one. Ah, he's going to put it on this guy here. That's an eight. That's enough to kill him. Which means he gets to attack someone else. Which is a critical. And he's just going to put the critical on this one here. And that's two, but it's a critical. He's going to get his... experience. He gets to heal another wound. Actually, so he's actually in pretty good shape now. His problem is he only has 15 wounds. Alright, so that was the lawman's turn. So now it is, I mean it was this marshal's turn. Lawman's turn. He does not get a grit. He's going to attack. Gets to reroll one. A crit and a regular. He's putting them both on this guy. Red is the crit. So two and four. Four minus three. So he does three total damage. Oh, no. Forgot. He gets the plus three extra damage. Uh, so he does four damage. Because that would have been a seven and that would have been a five. But you can only do two total damage anyway. Now the bandito. His turn. Reroll one. So three hits. This guy has nine wounds. He's just going to put all three on him. He is going to use a grit to reroll that one. This one. Oh, well, no, wait. Yep. So this one will do two damage which takes him up to 11. This one, after the three, will do two damage, taking him up to 13. This will do one damage after the defense, which takes him up to 14, and so the bandito actually kills this guy. So he gets 40, 50 experience, 55 experience, and he, whenever he kills something, he gets to roll on a d6, and on a 5 or a 6, he recovers a grit. So let's see. And he gets his grit back. And that is the turn. So now it is time to try and hold back the darkness. We do again. And now they get to move forward and attack us, and it is still 16 attacks per. So let's go with Saloon Girl first. Ooh, ew. All right, now she can defend. So she defends all of them on the from the white dice and she takes, well she only takes four wounds, where is she at? She's at 10, she has 17 so she is just going to take the four wounds um, for this turn now it is Attacking the lawman, who is in a much, much better shape now. And I forgot comforting presents last turn, but... Oops, that one doesn't. Alright. Lawman defends. And again, he defends them all. Alright. 
Saloon Girl is going to attack. She gets to reroll two hits. She's going to put them both on this guy. So that's a five, six, seven, three, four, five. So she does four wounds. Now we are going to let. That's eight. We're going to actually let the lawman go next. He has two hits for a lot of damage. That's enough to do four on each, or four between the two, because you can only take two per hit. So he's got 12. All right, now we're going to let the lawman, or the marshal, go. He has two hits. He's going to put the first one on this guy here. That is three. Oh, so after three defense, he gets to re-roll with his Punisher one damage roll per turn. So he's going to re-roll that and a seven. So that gives him minus the three. Defense is a four, which is enough to kill this guy. Two takes him up to 14. At least I remembered that they were 14 this, this time. So he's going to use his other one on him. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, that is not enough to do any damage, but I never rolled my damage for the other one. So this his other damage on this guy for his other hit is a one which also is not helpful. So that was no good. Um, and he gets his experience and heal a wound. And between comforting presence and him killing stuff, he's actually healed himself to pretty well. All right, so all that's left is the bandito who has one critical hit, his one reroll for his glasses, two critical hits, so he of course will put them both on the gas guy left, and that's enough to do four more damage, so he's up to seven wounds. Time to hold back the darkness. Oh, and I forgot for him to roll to move, well, he's at his max grit, so it doesn't matter. All right, hold back the darkness, and we do, an 11. Wow, all right. He gets to attack this time. One, two, three, it's the lawman. Four, five, six, it's the saloon girl. So he's attacking the lawman with eight attacks. He hits once. The lawman defends, and he defends. Ooh, okay. Saloon girl roll to move. She can move five. She's going to try to escape. She does not. Okay, so she will attack him. One hit, one reroll. Two hits. She hits on a four, yes. Put them both on him. Six, and this one is a four. So this one does one damage, and that one does two damage. One damage, two damage, so that takes him up to ten. Um, I'm going to actually let the lawman go. Roll to move. He gets a grit. He is not at his max grit, so he can get one. So he gets one grit. He's going to attack. One hit, he gets to reroll one critical, one miss. So it's, uh, let's we'll do the critical. Three, that's two. We're going to let the bandito go now. Roll to move. No grit. He's got a critical. And. Just one critical hit. That may... Alright, that's enough to take him to 14 to kill the last one. He gets to roll to see... He's at his max grit, so it doesn't matter again. Um, he gets his experience. 55 experience. And now it's the marshal. He's dead. Um, the marshal goes. Four... One, two, three, four, plus his extra. One, two, three. And he is going to try his strength, his agility. He's going to use his agility because he's so fast. He got there really quick. And he's going to try and destroy this thing because we could still... Uh, so he gives it one. He's going to use, he's going to use his grit to reroll those others. Um, 
Okay, never mind. I rolled six dice instead of five dice. So let's. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to redo that with five dice, not six. He gets two, and he's still gonna use his grit to reroll the others. And eh, so still just two. So we have. I am just going to use poison markers and. I had been forgetting to put the sanity over there, so there is five sanity. Um, I think it's been five turns, it may be more. I'll figure it out at the end if it becomes a problem. Um, so two here. So that gives him 20 experience. And then we need 10 more sixes. All right, so time to hold back the darkness. We do not. So now it's a, oh, please don't be an attack. Swarm of rats. A scurrying tide of rats pour through the passage, swarming over the heroes and passing by. Each hero takes two corruption hits, gains 20 experience, and then has to pass an agility four or lose a side bag token. And we got to divvy up some sanity. So first off, two corruption hits. So saloon girl, she takes two corruption hits. Marshall, he takes one corruption hit. One, two. Bandito, he takes a corruption hit. And then the lawman, he takes a corruption hit. Or a corruption. Now they each have to pass their agility four. So, Swim Girl's agility is, she passes, the Marshal's agility is five, he passes, <sighs> Lawman's agility is two, he passes, and the Bandito's agility is two, and he passes, and they each get 20 experience. All right, now that the rat experience is divvied out, that is the, that was, okay, they moved. Uh, it is now Saloon Girl's move. Oh, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. She is going to use her luck of four to see if she can get a lucky swing with her axe to try and do some damage. She does not, but she's going to use a grit. Reroll those, and she gets one, giving her 10 experience. And we're going to put one more marker on there. Next, it is we'll just do the marshal. He can do his five for his agility. He's going to quickly attack. He's going to burn his last grit to redo that because I just do not trust my rolls for darkness. So he does two more. All right. So we'll use a sanity marker there now. Now it is Lawman's turn. He moves five. One, two, three, four, five, six for his extra one. And now the banditos move. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six for his one extra move. And that is the end of this turn. So now we have to hold. Oh, and I got to divvy out all this sanity. Never mind. Okay, Saloon Girl's going to take five. Um, you know what, we'll just let the Lawman take five. And we will let, I mean, and the Marshal will take five. Now we have the end of turn comforting presence. So, the Marshal and the Lawman will each heal a sanity. And it is but actually, I need to deal out, because I didn't do it this last time either, deal out another one, and we'll just give that to the marshal. And then it's time to start again. And now it's time to hold back the darkness again. And we do not. Again. All right. Saloon Girl moves. No grit. She will use her luck to see if she can get another lucky swing. She does get one lucky swing. And 
and she will actually show you a grit. What the heck? Can't take them with us to the next adventure. She still didn't get anything. Now the lawman goes, he gets a grit, which is nice because he was out. He's going to use his agility. He gets one and he's going to use his grit again here to get a second one. All right, so two more. I'm feeling good about this one. He gets 20 and Saloon Girl gets 10. All right, Lawman goes. He can move two, one, two. He will use his strength of five and he's just gonna muscle his way into some damage. He does two and he's gonna burn a grit and does nothing, but he does two more. So we are, we might be able to win it this turn if the uh, Bandito can do anything decent. And now, the, and he gets 20 more experience. Bandito to move. He gets a grit. He's at his max grit, so it doesn't matter. What does he have? He is going to use his strength of four to try and do some damage. He does one, and he's going to use a grit. And he's still, there's one left. Okay. So he does one more. He gets 10 experience. And now, throw another sanity over there. We're not even close on the sanity for anybody, so. Um, hold back the darkness. We do not. It's a growing dread card. Let me shuffle these. Threshold of the abyss. Teetering on the brink of destruction, you stare out into the void that will one day consume all. For every blood spatter and growing dread space the darkness has passed on the depth track, not including this one. Each hero takes one wound, ignoring defense. All right, so they each take two wounds. Okay. One, two, one, two. One, two. One, two. Okay, that's not horrible. All right, saloon girl goes. She doesn't move. She's going to use her luck, see if she can get lucky, and she destroys it. That is the end. So they can heal up. They get, for winning this, they get D6 times $50 and D3 Darkstone. So we're going to start with the Saloon Girl. Red or Darkstone, white or dollars. So she gets one Darkstone and 200 gold. She got 300 last time, but okay. And she gets a Darkstone. The Marshal. <laughs> He gets 50 gold, that's less than the 200 he got last time, and one dark stone. The Bandito, he gets a dark stone and 200 gold. And the, Mar or the Lawman, he gets 200 and a dark stone. No, he gets 100 and a dark stone. And that clears it all up. They heal everything. They have destroyed the altar and stopped the void storm from coming over. So really all that's left, they're going to clean everything up. That was the end of... Uh, uh, that was the end of the game. They reset to one grit each. Um, and then they've got a roll for corruption. I will do that right now, once I get rid of all this grit, these grit markers, they have to roll for their corruption. So the Saloon Girl has two Darkstone and a Darkstone item. So she takes two corruption hits, and she saves one. So she, she is up to four corruption, but she has all that extra hold back the darkness stuff. Um, and then I just thought about it. Uh, she actually... With that one time she used her gear to block uh, those uh, wounds, even though they came from two people. Uh, she also has a second one that can do the exact same thing, so I would have just burned both. Uh, so no, no change to anything there. All right, now corruption hits for the marshal. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and 
no dark stone items. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, he takes five corruption hits. Okay, let's see. He may, he may, well. All right, but he only takes one corruption. Now, the lawman has three dark stone and one dark stone item. No, it uses a dark stone. Nope, that's a dark stone item, so he's got to take four. He takes three. Hits. Defends two, so he takes corruption. And now the bandito. He has one, two, three, four dark stone and no dark stone items, so he rolls four times. He takes two corruption hits, and he takes one corruption. So everybody took a corruption. That is the end of this. They are going to head back to town after fighting lots of Black Fang tribe. I do not like them. They get lots of attacks. We got very lucky this time. In fact, I think the loss of that 5 plus armor made a much bigger difference than uh, the not doing the health. It was much closer the last time, but maybe the rolls were just a lot luckier. And I got incredibly lucky on the holding back the darkness rolls, which never happens. But uh, so now that I've played this twice, uh, the final battle, I enjoyed it. It was it was a lot of fun. They are going to head back to town, and they will continue their run against the Black Fang tribe. So until next time, happy gaming and uh, have a great week. Mm -hmm.